Welcome back to the Gophers Insider Podcast. This is uh, podcast number two, right? Uh, TalkNorth.com, at TalkNorthPod on Twitter. Um, it's good to be back, Ryan. And I know we have some news uh, as far as the Gopher football team. We have a, a bowl matchup in the Outback Bowl versus Auburn, the I Auburn hope, Tigers. I hope you bought your tickets already because those $1,000 plane tickets are... Those are stiff. That thing, the plane tickets, the, the prices, they just to travel up yeah, oh, yeah. immediately. It was crazy. How, how long is that drive, you, would you think? Well, I've, I've taken the drive to Florida quite a few times. It was 28 hours in Naples. So subtract two hours, 26-hour drive. So college students jump in a van. You don't have school. But parents, adults, that's a tough thing to do. Well, you'll be there. You know, I, I look at this uh, football matchup and, uh, you know, Auburn's a team that, you know, going into the season, um, you figure, okay, you know, this is a team without a quarterback. Um, they have a true freshman, uh, Bo Nix, who ended up winning the job. Um, you know, they, I think they overachieved, in my opinion, going into the season. But if you look at the way that things were going during the year, the way uh, Bo Nix was able to turn things around at the quarterback position, they had other players on defense step up. Um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're right in the mix for a playoff at some point. And, um, you know, they beat Florida. Um, obviously, they beat Auburn. I mean, I'm sorry, Alabama. And uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people might look at this matchup as one that uh, – you know, it seems pretty daunting to me. In your eyes, they seem to have overachieved. I'll bet you everybody in Auburn, they didn't overachieve to them. If they beat Alabama, they want to be playing for the playoff, but instead they're playing, in the eyes of the Southeast, they're playing the Minnesota Gophers. So when it comes to a bowl game, it's so much about who shows up, who's excited to be there, who's not. The University of Minnesota fans and the team, they're excited to be there. 10-2 and two is bigger than anybody expected. Is Auburn really that excited to go and play the nine and, to play the, at 9-3 and three to play in the Outback Bowl? Coming off an Alabama win? Or are they frustrated because they lost to LSU, they lost to Florida, and they lost to Georgia, if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Yes, and they lost yes. to Georgia. Yes. So I, are they going to be excited? I think it'll be a little bit of, of a mixed bag. But you talked about Bo Nix, SEC Freshman of the Year. An offense true freshman, that, too. True freshman, yes. It's an offense that has talent, but it's not daunting. What's daunting is that defense led by... Derek Brown, yeah. Yes, SEC Player of the Year, Derek Brown. And don't sleep on Marlon Davidson, either, as that he's the other guy in the D-line. The goal for offensive line will be tested. Daniel Falalele's tibula... They need it fixed quick because that's it's going to be a that's going to be the biggest task that it, task that interior battle. So this is January first bowl, um, the second one in what like a hundred years for the Gophers. Well, it's not hundred you know, years. It's, 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 it's the 60s. <laughs> yeah, C- Citrus Bowl. Um, you know, back in was it 2014? Um, you know, I, well, we we played Missouri in that bowl, right? That was Missouri. Um, yes. So I think that that you know you look at some people ask me, oh well, you know, last year. Um, you know, we had a couple guys not playing the bowl. Um, you know, what's going to happen this year? We have several seniors who are, you know, NFL caliber, you know, are they going to skip the bowl? I mean, this is a completely different situation than the Citrus Bowl versus Missouri and last year's bowl game. I mean, we're talking about the type of season in, in, the, in this senior class that I think they want to go out with a win. I think they want to go out, you know, um, making sure this program you know, has some momentum going into the off season. You know, you talk about Tyler Johnson. Um, you know, you talk about some of these seniors who have a chance to play in the NFL. I don't see them skipping this bowl, although I haven't, we haven't heard officially on all these guys, yeah, Antoine Winfield um, and such. You know, Kamal Martin, obviously, he had in, some injury issues. Um, you know, but I, I just see these guys trying to trying to finish strong, and they really do need, obviously, all of them to, to try to compete versus Auburn. You do, but if you have an injury, let's say Kamal Martin is not fully healthy, then you don't play. Because his NFL, no, no, yes, yes. Yeah, if his draft, his draft has coming up, if he's injured, then you don't play. Right. We all Gopher fans want everyone to go down there and beat Auburn. But if you have that type of situation, don't play. Tyler Johnson, 
does Tyler Johnson want to finish tied with that all-time touchdowns record? Or does he want to have the record? You know that that's something that PJ Flex doesn't want to get. Like last year, I, I can't remember exactly what record he was going for. I think it was receiving yardage record right, in yep. a single season. Yep. And they fed him the ball and he got it. Well, that's another thing for him to play for. But it's a whole bag of seniors. You're talking about Carter Coughlin, um, Rodney Smith. Right. And so, but some of these guys are going to uh, – the big fella inside um, – the, the defensive tackle from Maple Grove, who's had a f- fantastic, fantastic career. Uh, it turned, it, it jumped his career from just a walk-on freshman, I believe he's a walk-on, to being one of the interior studs. Like, these are all guys I think have to improve their stock still. I think Rod- the- Rodney Smith is yeah. a guy. I mean, he has a big bowl game. You know, I, I think at one time, you know, people were talking about him as being a top, you know, three or four back in the league. Um, but, yeah, the, the Auburn matchup, we talked about it on our last show whether it was going to be Alabama or Auburn. I, I really do like this Auburn matchup better than Alabama because I think people, you know, just kind of think about Tua's injury and, and really, you know, discount Alabama. But I, I, I think this, this matchup is a lot more, uh, what do you say, winnable? Um, I believe it it's is. Not, <laughs> you're playing Auburn, you know, a team that could easily have been in the playoff. But, um, you know, I, I think Minnesota, um, you know, they won't be playing with, with the elements involved like, like Wisconsin. Um, I think you're going to see a team like you saw earlier in the year uh, as explosive on offense. Um, again, you talked about the offensive line. You know, Can they handle the defense of an SEC team? And we'll see. Um, and I'm excited. It's noon, ESPN, January 1st. Um, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of exciting games that, 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 that day. And, and they have this game like you know, smack dab. Uh, not really in the middle, but actually like kind of right away. To, to kick things off uh, on January first, that's on the yeah, day. The, that's pretty good. It's in that big group of usually there's three, four games at the same time, and you get to choose: Are we going to get the coconut shrimp? In Minnesota got the coconut shrimp, or is the or is the winner of the game going to be for the for the blue and onion? I'm a blue and onion guy. It's weird because New Year's Eve, my family always goes to Outback Steakhouse, I, I, and it's all because of advertising. It's all because of this game. I have game. not had that blue and onion, oh, onion like, since fabulous. I was in my twenties. The fact that Minnesota didn't get the blue and onion and had to eat, it, we got stuck with the coconut shrimp was super depressing. I even put a Twitter campaign telling as many people that Minnesota needs to get the the blue and onion, but we didn't. We got the coconut shrimp, so maybe the, I, I have to go with the shrimp. I'm sorry, man. Why? Just to be confrontational with me? Yes. Because you're from sure. Hawaii? Yes, yes. <sighs> I, Come on. It's just... It's, it's not a spam it's, it's sounds, shrimp. It sounds healthier. It's, it sounds healthier. It, it's Outback. <laughs> it's healthier the Outback. <laughs> but, you know, um, talking about, uh, you know, a team that's also um, got some news uh, this week, uh, go for volleyball. Um, they made a, a hell of a run um, at home, and they're in the Sweet 16 uh, playing Florida on Sunday. And, you know, Hugh McCutcheon, uh, you know, last year, huge disappointment for him and his program. You know, he's always done such a great job. But just for his the goals that they had to play in the Final Four here in Minneapolis, um, it didn't happen. Um, they, you know, they were just cut short. But I think this is a team that every year, you know, Hugh McCutcheon, the talent that he, he, he puts in, into this, uh, this program, um, they always have, have a chance to win the Big Ten. Um, and they always have a chance, to me, to get to the Final Four. You know, it's just like one point... A couple points here or there, you know, can they get over that hump? Um, you talk about the different matchups that they've had. Florida, I think, you know, is a, is a winnable one. A few years ago, they just ended up playing a team that I think in Texas um, that they had played before. You know, it's just it's just about the matchup. And again, uh, this is a team that has some senior leadership. Um, I think they have the, the talent, the young talent. Um, they've got the offense, you know. I'm not going to pretend here that I'm like a, a volleyball guru, but at the same time, I know how well this team played at, at the beginning of the year. Um, and again, like I said, I know they have the seniors. That, um, and, I, and I feel like this might be a run that they can make um, in Austin. Um, but we'll have to see this weekend. The, the Minnesota girl, uh, the Gopher Girls volleyball program, women's volleyball program, it's more, probably the most underappreciated or under, what's under known, I guess. I don't know. In terms of the hottest ticket in town, like you go to those games, the oh, place packed. is packed. It's packed. Yeah. And what, Everyone's so excited to be there. I have so many fellow uh, friends that went to the University of Minnesota, um, former classmates, fellow alums, who love going to the University of Minnesota volleyball games. Um, I have one friend who used to play for football who loves going to go for volleyball as much as anything. It's a ticket. Like if you uh, if you have but young if kids, you talk about the sport though in general, like it's growing like crazy. But, but volleyball is was one of those sports where you can't fall asleep. 
like you know, if, if, even basketball games, sometimes they go through a stretch where they don't score. Football, I mean, sometimes you know the defense or whatever. But in volleyball, it's like point. Point. I mean, there's just there's, point you. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so much excitement to me in a volleyball match, and when you have a team like Minnesota, who um, you know is always competing for a championship and for a Final Four, um, you know they and and again, Hugh McCutcheon too. Like he's probably one of the most underappreciated coaches. You know, I think just just nationally um, because of you know he had the attention that he got with the you know, the Olympics, but since he's come to the Gophers, I mean, they've always been relevant in, in on the national scene like every year. Um, and it's weird because like, I guess not weird, but it's pretty cool that like other coaches and other sports for the Gophers, you know, whether it was like PJ Fleck, um, you know, Richard Patino, um, you know, back when Tracy Clays was the football coach, like he would go to Hugh McCutcheon and he would ask him about like philosophies. Kind of like a Jay coaching. Robinson situation. Like that's kind of what some people used to do with Jay Robinson. Uh, not, not, not necessarily. Well, well you're, you're thinking yeah. of the negatives of yes. Jay. Think um, of the one of the positives when the program was rolling. No, and, you're right. You're yeah. right. I mean, you know not, what I mean? No, Don't I'm think gonna, of the negative I'm section of it. I'm not going to disrespect Jay Robinson for what he accomplished at yeah. the U. But that's kind of the way uh, where they in, were with you Jay. Know, in the later years, yeah. it was. Yeah, J- coaches used to go to Jay in a similar way. Like how do you, at this university, how do you build continual success? Sure. And speaking of continual success, success what other gopher program has had the continue continual success in recent history of the volleyball program the oh, we were t- me and my wife were talking about this fellow university of minnesota grad the only one she brought up was girls hockey like those are probably the two most consistent winning programs right in and they send, they gopher send sports right now. they send players to the national team you, they they play professionally i mean we've got women's volleyball players um featured in like you know um, like Adidas commercials and things like that. Yeah, it's, pre- it's pretty amazing. So check out the volleyball team this weekend on Sunday. Um, and then go for women's well, also. Hold on. There was one more important oh, thing sure. we got to no, add go in. Ahead. Go They're ahead. playing Florida. They've already beaten Florida. Yeah. They've beaten Florida yeah. this year 3-0. Yep. So that's a very well, important fact coming in. It is. It's great and it's not maybe not great because they got some scouting on them. But at the same time, uh, like I said, this team it has the, the, the senior leadership and they've got some young talent. I think they have a chance to make a run if they can get past Florida. Um, but this weekend also go for women's basketball. You know, they've got Janelle McCarville day. I mean, she's, she's going to have her, her, her Jersey up in the rafters. You know, they're not retiring her number, which they don't do that that often now, but her Jersey will be up in the rafters, you know, with obviously the greatest, uh, of all time, the goat, uh, Lindsay Whalen. Um, and it's, I think it's pretty, <laughs> it, it couldn't be cooler than this, right? Like, she has her jersey retired, like, and, and Lindsey Whalen is coaching the team. She'll be there, you know. I mean, those two, when you talk about go for basketball, um, I mean, the final four run that they had and, and just um, all the memories that they made, um, you know, just amazing time in, 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 in go for basketball. And really, why is it taking this long? No, I'm, I'm, it's, 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 I'm glad that, it, that it's happening. Shoot, for the University of Minnesota, this wasn't long. This is fairly quick. You know, the girls program. Not as quick as, 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 as uh, Maroon Mamba, Rachel That's Bannon. true. They got her up quick. They got her up the, 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 the I think the year after she, she left, they got her up. But she broke yes. all of Lindsey Whalen's records. I mean, it was an amazing year for, for, for uh, Rachel that year. But Janelle McCarville, I mean, I wasn't around go for basketball then, but um, I mean, do you have any memories of her as a player? Um, I was fresh out of school then, but Lindsay Whalen, when Lindsay was making her run, Lindsay used to play with us at the rec center, and she was phenomenal. She'd control games. Did you have to guard her? Uh, no, or were you I, guarding Janelle? No, no, no. I was always smart enough to be on Lindsay's team. I was always smart because Lindsay don't shoot the ball. She creates for others. Right. So, and I always move and cut. But, you know, Janelle never was up there. Man, but that, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? It was not that long ago. <laughs> it was like 15, okay, 20 years ago. Yeah. It was like 15, 20 years ago. You don't move um, and cut like that anymore, do you? What's that? You don't move and cut like that on the court I move and anymore. cut better than you. Yeah. <laughs> Replace right. my knees. I do have two bad knees. Yes, yes. So. But I do remember... I, I do remember those ga- those days um, strongly because, like, they were on the cover. I remember being on the cover of USA Today. Uh, Lindsay and Janelle, like, they were the ultimate duo. They were our Minnesota version of Stockton and Malone. Um, that nice. I remember I we like talking that. about. <laughs> I remember talking about like back that. in the day. It was a little gut wrenching when they lost in the final four, but that was an exciting run that the entire state got behind. Um, and then to see follow Janelle's career through the pros, um, there has always been a good following her for her when she comes back to play. A Against the length, all it links all those years, um, and, and then when she they came back and and they joined together with the links to win, you know the championship. 
I mean, this doesn't happen. It doesn't you know? happen. I, you like, know, it's 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 unbelievable. Final four in the same town, you win, you know, a, a championship, a world championship. They did um, do that. Like yeah. my thought, like when during Janelle's prime was she sure. wasn't. Yeah, she wasn't sure. quite here. But I, my vivid memory is we'd go to the games with my, with, with my wife. Um, we'd watch the Lynx play off of. Uh, 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 the tickets free from the, wait, 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 how my friend, Jeff Munich. It took me a second. Jeff yeah. Munich, we get his tickets. So we go down there. 